Hi, I'm Melanie. Welcome back to our house to homestead. Join my family and I as we convert our house on the outskirts of Auckland, New Zealand into a homestead where we grow, harvest and cook our own food from scratch. In this episode, I was meant to be out digging up the sweet potato. But as you can see, it's a little bit grey out here. It's been very damp today. And although we've got renovations happening on the sleep out, which are causing a lot of noise and making it quite difficult to film, I thought today would be the perfect moment to get into the sweet potato garden. However, I need some sunshine in order to allow the sweet potato to cure. So I'm going to put it off and instead I'm bringing to you today a recipe for the upcoming winter. Something that Ben and I have enjoyed recently, mulled wine. Deliciously spicy, very easy to make and something that you can have on hand to quickly whip up to make a really cold evening into something quite special. Welcome into the kitchen and today what we're going to make is mulled wine. So it's a really delicious treat that's actually super easy to make and perfect for a really cold evening and it's actually quite a crowd pleaser. So if you're having some people over this autumn or winter and you want to look like you're being really fancy then whip up some mulled wine. So it's a really yummy syrup that we make out of cinnamon, cloves, I've got some cardamom and also some peppercorns and some star anise. I like to put some orange rind in there as well. The amounts that I'm using today are going to be used for effectively one bottle of wine. You can do this a number of different ways. You can make it per bottle of wine like I'm going to because it's really easy to whip up anytime you want it. Or something that's really nice as a gift is when you make a bottle of the syrup and then you can gift it to other people. They can put the syrup in with the whole bottle of wine or the syrup might be for more than one bottle of wine depending on how much sugar you put in there and how much you reduce it down. Or you could use it glass by glass, so you could tell them how much syrup to put in per glass and then top it up with the wine and then they can heat it up from there. Let's get into it. So quite simply, into a pot I'm going to put, these are two full cinnamon quills or cinnamon sticks. I just broke them up. I'm going to put, oh, I've got four green cardamom pods. You could use brown as well. You could use cardamom powder if you have it. Uh, you don't need the pods on there, but you also don't need to remove them if that's how you've got the spice. These are optional. It's just a flavor I really like, and I think it complements the other spices. I'm just giving them a bit of a squeeze. If you wanted to extract more flavor, you could totally whack them with the back of uh, the handle of a knife and even grind the seeds and that would totally release more flavors. I'm also putting some peppercorns in here. Peppercorns are really good for inflammation and I know that peppercorns are used in chai and I think that these flavors really mimic chai so I like to add it in as well. I've got eight in there. Next I'm going to add in star anise. I would add one full star if you have it. Unfortunately, I've just got these two bitsy bits ones, so I'm chucking both of those in there. You can see it's a bit of a guessing game. Really, you're not gonna mess this up. When you actually make your mulled wine later on with the wine, you can adjust it to taste. 
I really like clove um, and there's lots of health benefits for clove so I have seven in here so I'm going to go in with those. Something that you could do if you didn't have the whole spices like I do here is you could use the ground spices. If you're using the ground spices I would wrap them up in a little muslin cloth and tie it off so they don't leak through but it doesn't really matter if they do when you make the syrup if you let it settle they would settle to the bottom and you would be left with a really rich flavored syrup in the end okay so to my spices i'm now going to add about one and a half cups of water again this doesn't really matter the more water you put in the less sweet it's going to be obviously you can adjust that with sugar but what I like to do is put quite a bit of water in and then simmer it for a really, really long time. So that extracts a lot of the flavors from the spices. If you weren't gonna simmer it for a very long time, then I would suggest putting less water in because obviously that's gonna dilute your wine quite a bit. And now finally, to make it a syrup, again, this is optional. You don't have to sweeten at all. You could just simmer this as it is, and then when it's gone your desired color and you know that enough of the flavors have been extracted, you could mix it in with your wine. But what I'm gonna do is I do like to sweeten it slightly, and I'm going to put one third of a cup, it's just under, of sugar in. Again, this is totally adaptable. You could use white sugar like I'm using, or you could use brown sugar, or you could use honey. You could use agave syrup if you wanted. Really, it doesn't matter, but I like it when it has a little bit of a syrupy texture, and I definitely like that it sweetens the wine slightly. It's like a warm hug when you drink it. Oops, I nearly forgot. Also, we're going to pop in our rind of an orange. I think, again, this just completely complements the flavor. I personally don't put the fruit of the orange in. It's just not something that I like. I don't think the acidity of the juice complements the wine, but lots of people do like orange juice in there. So by all means, go ahead and do that. One thing I would advise is if you're making this as a gift, a syrup with orange juice in it may go off if there isn't enough sugar content in there. So that's just something to be careful of. Awesome. And now it is time to go over to the stove top for simmering. I'm really happy with that consistency. I know that I could easily add half or one bowl of wine to that and it's going to be incredible. You could totally leave it for longer and get it thicker if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. The longer you leave it, the more flavors that will come out of the spices in here. So at this point, you've got a couple of options. You could strain this off into a bottle and then you could make it glass by glass, glass if you wanted to. The rule is if you heat your wine up to the point where it is bubbling, you're going to be driving off the alcohol content in the wine. Now for me, I'm not too worried about that. I could care less. But for someone that does want to have the alcohol, that does want to retain the alcohol content, then I would suggest you don't want to heat the wine more than once. And when you heat it, you want to get it to this point where it's creating steam, but that's it, no bubbling. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour at least half of this bottle into the syrup. And when Ben and I drink this, we just leave all of the spices in there and carefully pour it off. You could strain it with a strainer if you wanted to, but I really don't mind. And what I like to do is I put more wine than we're going to drink tonight in the pot. I let it sit there 
and then I pour it back into the bottle. Then for the subsequent evenings, if we want to have mild wine, we just pour it into a Pyrex jug and heat it. Or we can put it back in the pot and heat it till it's steaming like this again. As I said, I don't mind about losing some of the alcohol content, but doing it that way would mean that I'm driving off more of the alcohol than if I heated the wine just once. But my way means that all of the spices and the flavors come out a lot more over time, especially while it's sitting at room temperature in the bottle. So it's up to you really what you decide. So the wine that I'm using is a Merlot. I think you could pick any red wine that you like the flavor of. I haven't really tried it with anything else because that's the kind of wine that I like. And now this is going to go back on the heat to come to a steam again. So now we can see this steam that's coming off the pot and that's perfect. So we're steaming and now you literally pour it into the glass. I just pour it freehand. I don't care if there's spices in there, but you could put a strainer over top if you're worried. And then when this is cooled down, I'm going to pour it into here. I don't want to strain it at that point. I want to keep all the spices in there. And then as it sits in room temperature for the next couple of days while we drink it, it's just going to get richer and richer in flavor and it's really delicious. Oh, so warming. Enjoy. Thanks for joining me to make mulled wine. I hope you enjoyed the recipe and follow me along and join me soon for the next episode. Details for any products and equipment used are in the description below. Hit subscribe to follow along with all of the developments on our house to homestead. I'll be posting more videos on growing, harvesting and cooking our food. Don't miss out. See you next week team.